Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It has been a rainy morning and today I'm going to be working on some trees, doing some light pruning. I'm going to start today by pruning up my northern bog style forest. This forest is a mix of larch trees in the front and black spruce trees in the back. And the idea when fall comes, the larch trees will turn that golden yellow color against that dark backdrop of spruce trees. It should look quite, quite nice. I'm going to do some minor pruning work. You can see some of the shoots on the larch have gotten quite long. Over here, there's one. Over here, you can see the long shoots, the long apex on that one. Over here, I've got a lot of shoots near the apex that need pruning on that one. The black spruce are just covered in buds, which is really exciting. There's even buds coming on the older wood in here. So that's super exciting because I want to get these spruce trees as dense as possible and as miniature looking as possible. These trees are quite small and I'm trying to keep them as miniature as possible. So it takes a lot more pruning on these to kind of keep them under control so they don't get thick and coarse and uh, out of shape. So that's why I'm pruning them today. Just kind of a minor midsummer pruning. This forest has two apex regions. The black spruce kind of comes to a triangular form with the peak here and the large forest kind of comes to a triangular form with the peak in this area. So they're kind of two offset triangles. So I've got to keep this side of the forest down to get my triangular shape to the overall profile of the forest. So I'll take it back quite low here. I think I'm going to take it right back to here, there, and to here. Reducing that tree back quite far. I'll take some of these shoots back here, the apex back to here. Just keeping a little bit of the new growth. Do a little needle plucking of some of the older needles. That looks pretty good. That's kind of got this side in check here. I'm going to work on the apex of this tree now. It has a lot of wild shoots coming off of it. So I think I want to develop this shoot here and the rest can be branches. So I'll take these back like that. Here. Some ones out the front can be reduced back to there, to here. And then I've got a cluster on this branch that can be reduced. I can take that top shoot right off like that. Reduce this one back to here and here. And here. I could probably, there's a lot of budding back on this branch, so I'm going to take it off right here, taking that whole tip of the branch off. That gets this a little more compact. Maybe this has to come back a bit further too, like that. That gets more of a triangular shape at the top of this larch. The tree on the left hand side here has a few long shoots that need pruning back. I can take this branch back to a back bud here, like that. This long one back to there. This one can come back to here. This tip's getting, ah, oh, that one's all right. I can take it back to these back buds. I want to keep these trees sort of a tight conical form. I'll remove some of the older long needles here. Now that all this new growth has grown in, they're no longer required. Yeah, so here's another branch I can take back to get that conical form tighter. So it's not such a spreading tree, so it's a little more 
vertical. Now I've got a shoot on the apex here. I'll take back because I have a leader back here. And I think, well, I could take this one back. Yeah. I think that's about it on that tree. It's looking nice, a nice tight triangle. I'm not sure if all these buds on the spruce trees will open up this year or they may wait until spring of next year. But a lot of them do have green at the tips of them. So I'm thinking they will come out this summer. And that should look quite nice. On this larch out front here, I have a strong shoot up the middle here. I'll prune back to here, like that. Another shoot I can take back here. There's a long shoot on the inside here I can take back. Like that. There's another one here that I can take back. Another one here. Just taking advantage of all these back buds on the larch so I can make the trees more compact. On my black spruce trees, when these buds do come out, I can take a lot of these branches back, shortening them, which will be exciting to get that triangular form even tighter on them. So I'm looking forward to that day. There's a look at the amount I pruned off today on my bog forest. Not a whole lot, but uh, some important cuts. I'm having a look at the forest from the front and I can see I missed a shoot in here or two. I better prune those. That's looking much better. Just a little minor pruning today to keep the forest in check. Let's continue with the minor pruning today. I'll get out the next project. The next project that needs some minor pruning today is my Osage Orange Forest. Maybe this isn't minor pruning, but a midsummer pruning. The trees in the forest are growing really well. This is their third growing season now from seeds. And now the canopies up top are getting kind of thick starting to block out the light to the lower part of the forest. So I'm going to do some thinning up top. Here's a look at the upper canopy. You can see that some of the shoots are getting quite long and they're starting to kind of cascade over top of the trees below them. So I've got to keep you know each tree to have its own spot of sunlight, which means bringing the apexes in quite tight. The Osage orange trees get really nice bark on them as they mature. The bark is striped and looks very similar to a citrus tree. I'm going to start pruning the upper branches back and I'll prune them back as short as possible, keeping just a few, few leaves on the shoot. And I'll use directional pruning where I can. So this one I'll, I'll go back to here, shortening that branch. This one I can go back to here. Up here, I'll go to here. So quite a significant reduction to the tree. That gets that tree. There's a yellow leaf here. I notice there's a bit of white fly on them. So that gets that tree pruned quite compact. Oh, there's another branch here I can take off. There. That one branch was getting shaded out. So that keeps that apex nice and compact. So I'll do the same for the next tree. I'll continue working my way around the forest, getting all the branches pruned up. There's a lot of trees in this forest. And I believe this is the first time I've ever pruned these seedlings too. So it's kind of exciting. I'd been looking for Osage orange trees for a long time to grow as bonsai and Dana sent me the seeds. So thanks a lot, Dana. So I'm just starting with a rough pruning. I may have to go back and, you know, unify the overall design. But for now, I'm just taking it back, shortening everything. And then we'll have a look at it. We'll step back, have a look at it and uh, see what needs improving. Each tree and forest has a playlist so you can follow the progression of these trees right from seeds to where they are now. 
And that's the whole idea of this channel is to be able to follow the progression of trees. Yeah, a lot of these trees were getting shaded out by the other trees around it. There's a weed in here I can pull out there. So these Osage oranges, they have a milky white sap on them. And they are native up to this part of Canada, but they're hard to spot and they're not very common. There are a few dead trees in here. Some just didn't make it. There's one out front here. So I'll just prune those to the ground. Let me give you a close up of that. Some of the trees had a rough time, but you can see this one is alive. It has green leaves at the growing tip. Some weren't so lucky. There's a tree in here that's totally dead. So I'll just cut it off at the base like that. This tree here, the top of it died back, but it grew new branches down lower, so I can just take the dead top off. There, like that. There's another couple of dead trees on the inside here. Um, this one, the top died off, so I'll take the top off of it. This one beside it is totally dead, so I'll take that one right out reach in here take it off at the base like that so that one's totally dead there's a couple of trees out the back here that are totally dead that one this one one over here there's one here in the corner that's died take that one out and I think that's it when trees are grown from seeds each little seedling has slightly different genetic characteristics. Some are more cold hardy than others. So when you plant a whole bunch of seeds, it's natural that you do get some dying off in the cold. I'm having an overall look at the forest now. I could trim back some of the edges a bit, kind of keeping an asymmetrical rounded canopy to the forest, trying to reduce maybe some of the mass off this corner. I think that would look better, so I'll work away at that. I've taken off quite a bit for this midsummer pruning. There was a lot more dead tree tops and dead trees than I thought in there. I think the rest of the trees will be happy to get that canopy thinned out to get more light down to those lower branches and some of the smaller trees. Here's a look at my Osage orange forest now. It's really maturing. The trunks are starting to thicken up a bit. It looks like a forest to me. It looks very inviting to go in there and explore. So let's get out the next project. The next tree I'll be working on is my hibiscus bonsai. I'll just spin it around so you can see what it looks like now. Some of the shoots are getting quite long on my hibiscus, so it needs pruning back. And this shoot over here has a flower bud developing, so I don't want to grow flowers at this point in time. I just want to get the foliage and branch structure looking good. Here's a look at that growing tip, and you can see there's actually two flowers, two flower buds forming on the tip. So I'll prune that back. Creating flowers and fruit and seeds on a tree takes a lot of the tree's energy. Usually when a tree is flowering or in fruit, all the energy of the tree is going into those flowers and fruit and the tree stops growing. When you remove the flower buds or the flowers or the seed pods or the fruit off a tree, all the energy the tree creates goes back into growing new foliage. So I'm going to prune this branch back now. There's a couple of leaves down low, so I'm going to go right back to those. So here I go, like that. There's a branch out the side here. I'll take it back to here, like that. I'll come around to this branch. That can be taken off right here. This one can be taken off here. Take the tip off this one. 
there's another strong shoot developing here, so I'll take that back. Take this one back to here. Some vertical growth here, I'll take it back to there. I'm using directional pruning on the tree, so pruning back just before a leaf that's facing the direction I want the new branches to grow in. Like that. A big leaf I can remove there. Now I've got to come down to this lowest branch and prune that up. I don't want this lowest branch to get too thick. I want to keep it as a smaller branch. So I'll take it back to here. Take the tip off. And I've got to take the tip off this one also. Yeah. To there. Some light pruning for the hibiscus today. The hibiscus is looking nice and trim once again. Let's get out the next project. Next up is my birch tree. It needs some minor midsummer pruning also. It's best to avoid any hard pruning on birch trees. If you take like a fairly major branch off or cut the trunk back, usually it starts rotting back um, and eventually might kill the tree. The best way to develop a birch bonsai is to start with a very young plant and just kind of clip and grow it until it reaches maturity. I'm going to start by reducing the apex. So I'll take this branch off to here, this one to here, back to here. That's got the tree roughly pruned up. I pruned back the new growth. So now I'm going to look at it and decide if I need to reduce any further branches back. I think the apex, I'm going to take this off here. I've got to leaf out the back so I can shorten that like that. On the apex here, I have a branch coming out the front and I have a low leaf down here so I can take the top off there like that. This one can be reduced back. Just trying to get the tree as compact as possible. There's a branch growing on the inside here that I'm going to take off. Like that. There's a branch growing at the junction of this branch and the trunk. I thought about leaving it and removing the thicker one, but the thinner one isn't going in a good direction. It's crossing the trunk, so that'll have to come off like that. This branch can be reduced back to here, like that. This branch out the back here, that can be reduced back. Take the tip off there. Tip off there and the tip off here. I left quite a pruning stub behind my new leader here. I'm not going to prune it back yet. I think I'll leave it until it kind of naturally starts rotting away and then I'll clean it up. I'm just afraid of cutting back into good wood and creating dieback in that area. Birches are very sensitive. I can take this back even further there. I finished pruning the birch up. I'll rotate it around so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. So I've got it fairly compact. And on to the next project. The next project for today is my silver maple forest. I repotted all these seedlings into the seed tray this spring and I've been letting them grow all summer. And now I'm going to do a hard pruning to the trunks to get them more compact. I'm going to spin the forest around. I think I've got the back showing to us, the thicker trees out front, so I'll spin it around. That looks better. So my thickest trunks I'll leave tallest and then as they get skinnier and skinnier I'll prune them down shorter. So here I go.
that certainly got my silver maple forest pruned down to size. Hopefully by the end of summer, they'll have lots of branches and leaves on them. And maybe for the first time, it'll start to look like a miniature forest. It rained all morning and we're expecting more rain tonight. So I'm glad I got some bonsai work in today, some midsummer pruning. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. Thank you.